another important element of unsupervised material, unsupervised learning we talked about yesterday, which was basically about association rule mining. So what is association rule mining? As I said, it is an unsupervised form of learning, which is responsible for identifying patterns of associations between different variables or different what we would like to call as items. Most common use case is what is known as market bar analysis in retail scenario. It refers to if you're buying a certain group of items, you're also likely to buy other group of items. So what is the other set of use cases where this is useful? It is also useful in scenarios where we say that in say a crime investigation scenario, you're trying to identify the phone calls made by a criminal you caught, and you may find accomplices by saying that okay, these were the numbers that called you immediately, and that will give you the uh, basic uh, difference between the original caller and the other people whom they have called. So that gives some kind of a notion of an accomplice. That's a very good use case. Similarly, there is another use case we talked about was drug sensitivity analysis. We're looking at the association between which DNA are together working to effectively, you know, work. this is in the healthcare domain, this is a very important problem. But what exactly do you mean by association rule? Is basically a very simple implication rule which is of the form saying that if you have a set of items which imply another set of items x and y so that both are items sets set of items and none of them have any common item so a k item set is an item set with k items so let's take an example of what is a typical measure of such thing we talk about support support is about among the total items in your maybe uh, store how many of these items you are purchasing that is what is of interest to us so it includes both left hand side and the right hand side of your rule the items in both whereas the right hand side is about con when we talk about confidence it talks about among the number of transactions which have the left hand side which is x among them, how many of them also have Y? That is the measure of confidence. So support is usually not that high. We try to look at something like 20% support or even 10% is okay because if number of transactions are in millions, even if you take five to 10% of the transactions are of interest for the items you're watching. But confidence is typically supposed to be, when you measure, it's typically a very high value, which is 90, 95% means if you've taken milk, bread, and uh, say sweet, and you should be able to say when they imply something else, like you're also buying something like cake powder or cake um, baking soda. Then you also should be able to quantify it saying that in among 90% of the situations where you're buying milk, bread and sweet, you're also buying baking soda. So that means that support and confidence together determine how important is the association rule you're trying to create. So this is an example. We talk about five transactions here. Each of them, as you see, is a collection of items which are being purchased. And association rules, if you take example like uh, jelly implies peanut butter. Support is 20 because jelly is present only in one out of the five. Whereas in that one record, there's already peanut butter present. So 100% is a confidence. So this is basically the association rules are defined in form of a set of items implying a set of items so how do you determine this there is one important property of the item sets when we talk about free time frequent item set mining that is about the condition that if we have a frequent item set the subset of that item set is also a frequent item set in the sense it cannot happen that you take out one element from a frequent item set you identified you come across something which does not satisfy the notions of your frequency which is support and confidence 
so it is very important to use this property to come across in an optimal way and incrementally construct the target frequent item set you're going to look at which is this the going to discover how does it work it works in very simple it starts with size smallest size set which is maybe size one then keeps on incrementing the set with additional items in the set provided you are matching the support that is expected of you let's take this example in the next slide which is talking about a multi-phase path constructing the frequent data start with we talked about minimum support being two 50 percent right so there we see that in the first step when you do scan of the overall database with four transactions where we take unary item set we see that unary item set four does not satisfy the criteria of greater than or equal to two which is the minimum support so we eliminate that so we are left with four single ton item sets then we expand those with item sets which match by addition of one extra element from the original transaction set that's where we get one two one three one five two three two five three five there again we see that two of these transactions do not support the minimum support addition so we eliminate that so we're left with four binary item sets one three two three two five three five then similarly here we expand to the three area set and we find that there is one which supports the minimum support of so we end up with 235 as the item set uh, so that basically concludes one kind of way of generating the frequent item set but what we also do is we try to remove subsets from the generated set by following the principle of if the subset of something is not again a frequent item set it does not satisfy the condition of uh, what do you call it does not satisfy the condition of that being again a frequent item set so given that that ultimately what we get is, is a question of print item sets but we are not done here because we have to also satisfy the notion of a association rule in association rule we're talking about a certain set of items nine a certain set of items right so some a1 a2 a3 implying b1 b2 b3 that too with certain confidence which is basically minimum percentage of the ones on the left side also have the right hand side of the equation so what you do we call that as a stage for discovering rules or the association rules from the generated frequent item sets there we try to create all possible combinations of rules then we connect all in different permutations as possible and then measure confidence related to each of these combinations so that is where we try to look at which of them satisfy confidence which you wanted suppose you wanted something above 90 percent so here in this case we'll only take up the three roles i1 and i5 implies i2 i2 and i5 implies i1 or i5 implies i1 and i2 so do you see that the basic notion of this is two stage first is to identify frequent item set second is to discover which are the rules which help us in general